Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week has been absolutely wild. With the response to COVID-19 really escalating, there has just been a lot of changes and a lot to keep up with. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on in medical school, um, how serious this is, and what it is that we can do as a general population in light of all of this stuff that's going on. We got an email earlier this week saying that all Harvard classes are going to be canceled and moved to an online platform and that students should move out by the end of the week and that they should not come back after spring break. A lot of schools have followed suit uh, with sending students home. For us medical students on clerkships, it was a little bit confusing in terms of what that meant, you know, should we go in the hospital? Um, as of today, uh, Friday the 13th, we second year, third year, fourth year medical students on clerkships and sub internships are still being told to go into the hospitals, though we do have some restrictions on patients that we can see. You know, I've been told we are not permitted to participate in the care of anyone who uh, is suspected of having COVID-19 because of their symptoms or recent travel history. A lot of other medical schools as of today have begun canceling clerkships and sub internships and of course this is something that is changing every single day so you know we're not yet sure where we will stand tomorrow or a week from now so to get some more perspective on this i wanted to talk to my good friend and class nikki joseph He's our Harvard Med School class president, and he's been working really closely with administrators over the last couple of days to get a better sense of what's been going on and to share that information with us. To HMS's credit, they've been pretty communicative with us about what's going on. I, but I think at the same time, this is so unprecedented that I don't think that they know exactly what needs to happen, whether we're gonna continue um, on our clinical duties. Like they're trying to emphasize, I think on one hand, that we are essential to patient care. We're part of the team, we're here to learn. I think on the other hand, at the end of the day, if we weren't there, patient care would continue the same way. And I think this does stand right now though, as a testament to how high a threshold there is placed um, on halting medical education because I think what does it mean to end um, medical education in the midst of a pandemic like we are the people who are going to serve our future patients during future pandemics right like mm -hmm. these things are not just going to stop today and I think like that it's kind of I don't know it's kind of beautiful that they're keeping us here and like in some kind of like almost weird and warped way um, it's a privilege to be staying in the hospital helping take care of patients in some form during this time, because I think a lot of other places have already said, you students gotta go, but Harvard still is putting some kind of trust in us. Um, I am gonna be headed back to Boston Children's Hospital tonight in just a few hours. Uh, I'm on my pediatrics rotation and I'm on call tonight. And, you know, I'm not gonna be working with any patients suspected of having COVID-19. But I was in the emergency department just a couple of days ago, and they were doing some fantastic trainings on precautionary measures and any appropriate personal protective equipment that would be used by physicians, nurses, anyone participating in a patient's care to ensure that all of us are working in an environment that is as safe as possible. Now, COVID-19 is serious. Let's not sugarcoat it. Let's not beat around the bush. This virus is something that has the potential to create devastating effects for our health system. You know, I've heard a lot of people saying things like, you know, this is just a bad flu and, you know, oh, I'm young and healthy, so this is probably going to be fine for me. And for some people, that may be true. And, and the evidence does show that for those who are younger and healthier, the mortality rate uh, is really quite low. However, it is our responsibility to minimize the spread of this illness to those in our community um, that have a higher susceptibility for mortality and morbidity from this illness. Those that are older, those who are immunocompromised, our goal right now is to slow the spread of COVID-19 from person to person. And the importance of this goal was beautifully outlined in an Economist article that came out a couple days ago titled, Flattening the Curve. You know, there's a version of COVID-19 in the United States where this highly infectious virus spreads quickly from person to person and many people start developing the illness and rush to the emergency room 
overwhelming the capacity of our hospitals. Unfortunately, this is something that has been seen you know, through anecdotal reports in Italy already. Hospitals are being run at 200% capacity where you know, ventilators and other equipment are being rationed because there simply are not enough resources to handle the influx of patients. There is another scenario though where we are able to take this very acute spread of the infection and flatten the curve by minimizing person-to-person -person spread. The importance of this is that it will give us time to have our health systems adapt and to make sure that our hospitals and emergency rooms are not running so far over capacity so that we can try to avoid a situation where we are making the excruciatingly hard decision about rationing care because we just don't have enough resources for the number of patients that are coming in at one particular time. But what is it that we can do in light of all this craziness that's going on right now? Well, what I'm about to say is not anything new or novel, but I think it is worth reiterating. There are a few categories of things. The first is with personal hygiene. Wash your hands, do it for 20 seconds. I know it feels like a long time, but sing the ABCs, twinkle, twinkle, little star, whatever it is that you need to do. Be sure to not touch your hands to your face. It's something that's hard to do. We do it unconsciously. I struggle with this sometimes, but it is just another way for germs to spread. Third, disinfect some of the surfaces that you're using. Your table, your laptop, your phone screens. These are things that you're touching throughout the day and that can hold germs as you move from one place to another. A second category of things is social interaction. Um, this term that we're all hearing more and more frequently now of social distancing. This means a couple of things. One, Avoid large gatherings of people. Having groups of people together just is another way uh, that this virus can spread quickly from person to person. Additionally, you know, COVID-19 does have an incubation period of two to 14 days, so we might be feeling asymptomatic, completely healthy, and yet still have the virus and still be able to transmit it to other people. Try not to shake people's hands, do the Obama elbow if you have to, you know, just try to minimize contact. A third category is with travel. Um, there have been a number of new travel restrictions that have been placed this week. From our perspective at the medical school and hospitals, all non-essential work travel has already been prohibited. From the personal perspective, I understand that it sucks to have travel canceled. I was anticipating to go to Europe for my spring break in a few weeks um, and was going to visit Italy as one of the destinations. And of course, that is not going to happen anymore. It is so okay to be frustrated and disappointed that all of this is going on. But at the end of the day, the FOMO that we're going to experience is far outweighed by the potential stressors that we might have uh, on our health system uh, as a result of this virus spreading more acutely. Finally, you know, if you're feeling sick or you have symptoms, uh, do stay home yourself and try to minimize the contact that you're having with other people. If you're being told to quarantine yourself, please follow those instructions. It's really, really important. If you feel like you're experiencing symptoms like a fever or a cough, it could be worthwhile to call your primary care provider before going to the emergency room. You know, there are a lot of illnesses that are going on right now that can mimic COVID-19. You know, we're in the midst of a really bad flu season and the allergy season has just begun. Um, and so your PCP may offer some valuable guidance into whether or not going to the emergency room is necessary. That being said, if you're experiencing really bad symptoms, a high fever, shortness of breath, or anything else where you feel like you need immediate medical attention, by all means feel empowered to go to the emergency room. I saw a, a Twitter post uh, earlier today that said, you know, the irony of a good public health response to all of this is that people in the end will say that you know, where we just overreacted. Let's be smart about this and let's learn from our brothers and sisters in other countries that are having their healthcare systems overwhelmed. And, you know, while these measures are inconvenient and are a hassle, um, we have to realize that they will play a huge part in making sure that our communities and our health systems can stay strong. That's it, just wanted to give you an update and everyone out there, please stay safe.